racist message engraved on a feature by the campus library was discovered yesterday by a university employee. We have the details on the steps that KSU police are taking to find the suspect. Recycling bins have been disappearing from many apartment complexes around Kent. Why the county decided to cut the recycling program and what this means for residents. And Mother Nature is celebrating April Fool's Day this year by giving us what we hope is one last snowfall. We'll have the updates in weather. And 20 vehicles were involved in crashes this morning across I-77 as an unexpected winter storm hit Northeast Ohio. All on this and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Breaking news from the university tonight as vaccine distribution continues across the country. That's where we'll begin tonight. Thanks for tuning in to TV2. I'm Melissa Myers. And I'm Troy Pearson. Governor DeWine announced today that Kent State and other state universities in Ohio will be receiving large shipments of the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Kent State will receive its first shipment of the vaccine early next week, with distribution beginning immediately. That's right, the university is strongly recommending that all students living in the dorms receive this version of the vaccine before departing for spring break. More details regarding how to register for the vaccine, as well as when and where the distribution will take place, will be coming in the next few days. You can stick with us on our socials at Kent Wired for updates on distribution. And Kent State is reacting tonight after a report of racist vandalism on campus. Our reporter Kyle Vassell joins us now from the newsroom with more. The administration sent out an email today denouncing the act and so far police have no suspects. However, the vandalism has been taken down. Kent State University police are investigating after racist remarks were found on a poetry display on campus. Yeah, it, it's, it's despicable language that, that shouldn't be in our society. Campus police say university staff members notified them shortly before noon Tuesday that they had found a racial slur etched into a display that was sponsored by the Whip Poetry Center. It was placed there. Somebody, un unbeknownst to us at this point, also tried to scratch it out by etching over it, uh, but couldn't completely... I Police say the words could have been present on the display for up to a week. Today, the university denounced the incident, calling on the Kent State community to act as agents of positive social change. Um, because I think it's important that students know what's going on, not only for their safety, um, but from a community perspective, you know, I, I think it is challenging of these situations because we don't want our students to um, feel hurt or attacked. And, you know, seeing these things can be very damaging. But it's also the reality we live in. This is the first reported incident of racist vandalism on campus since last fall when racist remarks on the front campus rock led to week of student protests. The incident leading Kent State to strengthen its policies against racism. And I think it's important to note that. So I am, again, reiterating, yes, proud and I'm grateful of the transparency from um, our administration on the incident because it does exactly that. It continues to show and highlight the harsh reality. And then it personally reminded me that this isn't an overnight success um, and that our impact isn't gonna be shown or seen right away. The university's anti-racism task force has been working all year on creating a better racial climate on campus. They will discuss their recommendations at a town hall next Thursday. So that is where we'll actually be presenting all of the subcommittees work that we've done this um, academic school year. Again, they're very like, they're strong suggestions that our administrators have already taken note of. So now the next step is to actually implement them. We have to actually translate these recommendations and suggestions into action. University police say whoever is responsible for this latest incident of racism could face disciplinary action from Kent State. Police also say defacing the property with a racial slur elevates the charge to a first degree misdemeanor criminal offense. Well, it could be a criminal charge. So the offense it would be ethnic intimidation. And in the state of Ohio, ethnic intimidation has to be combined with certain other criminal offenses. And in this case, it would be criminal damage uh, to that, uh, that display. Kent State University police say if anyone saw anything suspicious or any persons lingering in that area to reach out to them at 330-672-3070.
that good? resumed on Interstate 77 in Summit County, but is moving slowly tonight. Several accidents occurred on the route this morning, and officials say 20 separate vehicles were involved in crashes this morning. This comes after unexpected snowfall struck, stuck to the ground for the first time in nearly a month. The snowfall caused the National Weather Service to issue a winter weathery advisory to the region. And bringing it a bit closer to Kent, we were all scratching our heads at the snow on the ground and the wind that came with it. Here to explain and give us a look towards Easter weekend weather is Nick Summer. Hi, Nick. Hey, guys. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. I am Nick Summer with your Thursday night uh, weather forecast. So currently, yes, we are experiencing some snow. Uh, there is a special weather statement from the U.S. National Weather Service. Um, lake effect snow ban will affect Portage County and northeast Ohio counties up up until about 6 p.m. So snow is probably stopping right about now. Um, Akron, Canton, Youngstown, Kent, Warren, and Ravenna are the major areas that will be hit. Um, hazards include 35 mile an hour winds, uh, slick icy roads, so be extra cautious if you are traveling. Uh, right now across uh, northeast Ohio, getting in, we're still in those kind of January winter temperatures, uh, 28 here in Kent, 30 in Cleveland, 34 in Sandusky, so we're still kind of stuck in that cold winter weather. Uh, currently in Kent, experiencing some snow from that uh, storm. It is 28 degrees, feels like 20, uh, with a dew point of 12 degrees. Now, that is all I have for now. Stay tuned for an updated forecast and your seven day rundown. All right, thanks Nick. LaunchNet Kent State received a renewal of its key funding grant, according to an email sent by the university earlier today. Burton D. Morgan Foundation announced an award up to $350,000 to support LaunchNet Kent State through June of 2023. The program supports students, alumni, faculty, and staff in their entrepreneurial ideas to promote innovative thinking. And the Wick Poetry Center at Kent State is partnering with the University of Arizona Poetry Center for a global vaccination poem project. The project is meant to invite people to share their voices while promoting COVID-19 vaccination through art. This comes during National Poetry Month with Kent State President Todd Dykin submitting a stanza himself. The project officially kicks off on April 6th at the Kent State Fieldhouse. After taking a shot, people will be given a postcard allowing them to offer a stanza. And Kent State introduced new markers to the May 4th shooting site that marked the locations of the nine students who were injured as well as where the National Guard fired from. These markers were placed to physically elaborate on how far injured students were from the guard that day. One of the injured, Alan Canfora, was a driving force behind these markers. The new markers will be a part of a video showcased during the virtual 51st commemoration this May. A mass vaccination site is at the Summit County Fairgrounds is slated to open this Saturday. Scheduling to receive a vaccine began Wednesday and only 1,500 slots are available to people ages 18 and older. Applicants who booked an appointment will receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which only requires one shot. The site will be open three to four days a week and can accommodate up to 5,000 vaccinations per week. Portage County has put new recycling policies in place. We'll tell you where and if it could affect you. And later, police believe they know more information about the suspect in a shooting that took place last night in the state of California. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. but I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org.
If you're an off-campus resident at one of Kent's many apartment complexes, you may have noticed recycling bins leaving your complex. Kelsey Drennan, Kelsey Drennan joins us now to break down why you're seeing this change. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Melissa. Portage County ended recycling services for multifamily units as of this month. This means that many student apartment complexes around Kent State will either no longer offer recycling or be offering different vendors. Residents at the province received an email yesterday stating that recycling will no longer be available on property. And that residents at University Edge received an email saying that the complex will be switching recycling vendors. These changes come after the county ended its recycling contract with multifamily units due to contamination within recycled items. The, com the contamination level is capped at 21% with waste management, yet contamination levels with multifamily units reached 40%. This means the county was facing extra charges based on overages of the contamination level. Residents at other apartment complexes such as 345 Flats, University Oaks, and Eagles Landing have not yet heard from management about new recycling processes. When recycling, make sure your recyclables are fully cleaned out and that you're not tossing something into the bin that can't be recycled. If you're unsure if something can be recycled, check with your complex's management. Reporting from Franklin Hall, I'm Kelsey Drennan. Back to you, Troy. On Wednesday, Governor Mike DeWine signed an $8.3 billion transportation budget bill, which will fund upcoming road and building projects for the next two years. This bill is separate from a larger state budget, which will be finalized by mid-year. Other aspects of the bill include online registration for driver's license renewal and increased inspection of bridges throughout the state. Police have identified the suspect in a shooting that took place last night in Orange, California. The suspect is 44-year-old Amina Dab Gonzalez. At least four people were killed after Gonzalez entered a courtyard and opened fire on bystanders. Two officers tried to prevent Gonzalez from entering the area, but he locked surrounding doors. Police say they have reason to believe Gonzalez knew the victims. And Pfizer says protection from its COVID-19 vaccine lasts at least six months after the second dose. Pfizer says this makes its vaccine 100% effective against what the CDC calls severe disease. Previous estimates indicated protection lasts at least 90 days. Pfizer's ongoing phase 3 trials also appear to show the vaccine provides full protection against the B1351 variant of the virus, commonly referred to as the South Africa variant. And we now know the day every American adult will become eligible for a coronavirus vaccine. By May 1st, every state will make the vaccine available for people ages 16 and older. Every state, every state has a date set except for New Mexico, Virginia, and Wyoming, though all of those states will allow adults to get the vaccine during the month of April. President Joe Biden says that according to every state's plan, 90% of American adults will be eligible by April 19th. The snow is continuing to fall on this early April day, the first we've seen in what feels like quite some time. Nick Summer Reed joins us for his full seven day forecast and tell us, Nick, is it going to get warmer? Yes, guys, it will, but not till this weekend. Uh, so currently cloudy uh, will be cloudy all night up until 12 a.m. with uh, winter temperatures, 31 degrees currently dropping down to 28 degrees, going to be cloudy all night, uh, unfortunately, but tonight and tomorrow a little bit of sun tomorrow uh, intermittent clouds tonight with some sun in the morning and afternoon but we're still going to be at that 30 degree uh, kind of chilly winter uh, temperature now for your seven day forecast um, we are going to see a lot of sun uh, but not until about maybe saturday sunday um, and then heading into next week so tomorrow will be sunny but it will be a little chilly around 41 degrees uh, but for easter it will be nice and warm but a little cloudy partly sunny around 70 degrees, so it's a good day to be outside with the family. Uh, Monday as well, high of 74. We're definitely getting back into that spring weather. Uh, 73 on Tuesday, a little bit of rain, so some April showers coming. Um, and then, uh, sorry, 65, yes, on uh, Wednesday. So definitely look forward for that April weather. Uh, it is coming and it will be warm here shortly. That is all for your Thursday night weather forecast. I've been Nick Summer. Stay warm out there, Kent State. Thanks, Nick. President Biden unveiled his administration's infrastructure proposal, worth over $2 trillion. But the focus is on more than just planes, trains, and automobiles. 
and to partly pay for the sweeping plan, the president wants to increase corporate taxes. The suggestion already has Congress talking. Mary Maloney explains. President Joe Biden making his pitch to fix some of the country's most pressing problems. It's a once in a generation investment in America. A more than $2 trillion investment to rebuild America's airports, ports, railways, and roads. Unlike anything we've seen or done since we built the interstate highway system and the space race decades ago. It's not just investing in infrastructure. This sweeping American jobs plan dedicates billions of dollars to manufacturing, while also providing money to care for aging Americans, build or renovate schools and housing units, upgrades to water systems, and access to high-speed Internet. The president pledges his proposal will create green jobs while reducing climate change. The American Jobs Plan will lead to a transformational progress in our effort to tackle climate change. To pay for the plan, President Biden wants to raise taxes on businesses, including increasing both the corporate income tax rate and the minimum tax for American companies that acquire or merge with foreign businesses. The tax hikes turning off Republicans. The only thing it appears they're in favor of is more government spending, more taxes, and more government power over your lives. The bill's passage in the evenly split Senate is far from certain. It's big, yes. It's bold, yes. And we can get it done. In Washington, I'm Mary Maloney. The U.S. Defense Department announced new policies allowing transgender people to serve openly, given they meet all of the military standards. This repeals the four-year-long restri restrictions keeping transgender people from serving. The Biden administration confirmed the, ch the change yesterday. The policies will now ban gender, identity-based discrimination, and provide proper medical care for transition-related health problems. The trial of the Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin continues today as witnesses take the stand to provide insight on the killing of George Floyd. The trial featured witness testimony from bystanders who interacted with Floyd as well as police body camera footage of the incident. Chauvin has pleaded not guilty to charges of second degree murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. Day for a snowy opening day. Could Shane Bieber lead Cleveland to an opening day win? And TV2 is getting the April Fool spirit, and one of our shows will have a special episode dedicated to the day. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshare it again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So yeah, I know, that's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. We might root for different teams, but we all respect the game. And we can all root for each other when we wear a mask. Mask up, America. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Good evening, Portage County. I'm Mackenzie Flume here with all of your sports news. 
The Kent State soccer team had a bump in the road, and we will get to that. But before we do, I just want to wish my fellow Tribe fans a happy opening day. The Kent State women's soccer team was scheduled to play Buffalo today and Miami Sunday. Unfortunately, due to uh, roster issues involving positive COVID-19 tests and contact tracing, those two games have been postponed. The Toledo women's soccer team has also postponed their upcoming games due to COVID-19 protocols. Kent State's next scheduled game is April 8th at Ohio University. The Kent State women's lacrosse team was in action today at Dick Stadium. The Flashes have been playing well as of late, winning back-to-back -back games. Unfortunately, Kent State could not make it three straight wins as they fell to Mac rival Central Michigan 21-14. Madison Rapier led Kent State with four goals on the day. Up next for the team is a trip to Robert Morris to take on the Colonials April 9th. And oh, how good it feels to have the Tribe baseball back. Cleveland traveled up north for opening day in Detroit. It was 32 degrees at first pitch in Detroit with high winds and lots of snow. Starting pitcher for the Indians was Cy Young winner Shane Bieber. Bieber pitched a good game with 12 strikeouts in six innings. The only runs given up were in the first when Miguel Cabrera hit a two-run homer over the right field wall to put the Tigers on top 2-0 and then an RBI double in the second by Jacoby Jones to add one for Detroit. Even though Biebs pitched well, his team couldn't get the offense going until it was too late in the top of the ninth. Roberto Perez was able to add two with a two-run home run. That would end for the Tribe and the final score of the game was 2-3. The Tribe will continue the series in Detroit Saturday at 1:10. And while the Indians fans' hearts were probably heavy today, not seeing Francisco Lindor as our shortstop on the opening day roster, I'm not so sure the feeling was mutual. I say that because Lindor and the Mets have come to an agreement on a record-setting contract. The final agreement, $341 million. This is a 10-year contract, but doesn't start until next year and will go through 2031. The contract is the third highest in MLB history in terms of total money, trailing behind Mike Trout's $426.5 million deal with the Angels and the $365 million with the Dodgers um, for Mookie Betts. Congratulations, Lindor. It was well-deserved. And that's all I have for sports today. Follow us on Twitter at TV2KSU for up-to-date Kent State sports news. I'm Mackenzie Flume. Enjoy your evening, Portage County. They've been teasing it all day, but is one of uh, America's biggest rappers performing on TV2's own Kent Core tonight? We'll be back to wrap up TV2 News at 6 in a moment. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.
It's April Fool's Day, and while we hope you avoided any and all tricks, followers of TV2's show Kent Core may not be so lucky. The show posted a graphic at midnight yesterday saying that they were airing a special Thursday episode featuring famous rapper DaBaby. The promotional gag ended up becoming Kent Core's most liked post on Instagram and generated comments from DaBaby's fans. The show will air tomorrow in its usual 9 p.m. time slot with the band The Dolly Hoppers, who will be performing their new EP, The Warm Earth. And if you want in on some April Fool's fun, make sure to tune in into the agenda tonight at 9 p.m. The show, which features sketches and satirical newsreads, will be having a unique April Fool's Day special. While it, or while it should be just as fun as any of the show's regular episodes, this one is sure to gather in all the April Fool's Day spirit. Catch all of TV2's entertainment programming Tuesday through Friday at 9 p.m. and The College Voice on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Well, I will say this has been a successful April Fool's Day for my roommates at my house. Um, we put sardines in my <laughs> under my roommate's bed, oh, which, no. I mean, that was kind of cruel, but it had to happen. What about you? Did anything catch you off guard today? Yeah, unfortunately, I saw on Kent State Barstool's <laughs> Instagram that Chick-fil-A was going to, you know, come to Kent, but unfortunately, I was uh, caught off guard on that one. I was so excited, but unfortunately, that is not true, so I, know, I was, I I was very disappointed. I so. think that had a lot of us upset because I don't know about you, but I would love... I would love Chick-fil-A, and um, I would love Chick-fil-A at Kent. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Chick-fil-A at Kent right next to Cane's would be an, an incredible dynamic. Yeah, duo, and so. I know a lot of people in our newsroom were actually really upset about the baby, um, that prank. Oh, yeah, for Kent sure. I was, I, I was also disappointed as well, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, it would have been, been nice, but, hey, maybe one day. <laughs> and that will do it for our show tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Keep us up to uh, keep up to date with us on Twitter and Instagram at Kent Wired, and find breaking news online at KentWired.com. I'm Troy Pearson, and I'm Troy Pearson. April Fools! Have a great day, Portage County. <laughs>